three Quan Chang radios. They all look the same, but there are some very slight differences with this one. This is the Quan Chang UV5R Plus. Now I was reading online a little bit about this radio. I had heard that there was another Quan Chang radio. So you've got the UVK5 here, which is the sort of the OG model that come out sort of mid last year that was released. And then you've also got the UV uh, K6, or this is also branded the UV K58. It's kind of branded two ways. Then there was the UV 5R Plus, and I thought that that was just another Baofeng name. And I actually suspect that this radio was named the UV 5R Plus, and this is just speculation on my part, due to the fact that it's very closely named to the Baofeng's radios, which would mean that obviously when people are searching for Baofeng UV 5R, they might come across a Quanchang UV 5R Plus. Apart from that, that is pretty much the only similarity that this shares with a Baofeng. As we know with these Quanchang radios, they come with a different chipset in them, uh, a different RF chip, a BK6419, I think it was off the top of my head, which allows reception down to 18 megahertz, all the way up to 1300 megahertz with a little bit of a gap around 6800 six, megahertz. So what's different than these two? Well, the, there's only a couple of things that I can see that is different with this new radio from Quan Chang. When you turn it on, you'll see that it's got a nice blue screen. So the Quan Chang UVK5 was kind of gray. Uh, the K6 was orange. Now, of all three of these screens, I prefer this one. I like the blue. Uh, probably the next best is probably the orange. The orange is a little bit hard on my eyes. Uh, I mean, you might have a different preference to, my, to me, but the blue looks pretty good. Now, of course, what I've done is I've loaded the custom firmware, uh, well, one of the custom firmware that's available for this radio on here. This is using the EG Zuma version 0.21 mod. Now, this mod improves AM reception uh, it also gives you a host of other features as well that are available here in the menus. You can scroll through here and I'll put a link to uh, some of the modifications below as well that you can do to this radio. The second difference that I can tell is if you turn over to the side here, you've got the standard Kenwood programming port here, which is exactly the same on these other two models. But you'll notice here, these other radios, the UV K5 and the K6, they both have a USB um, icon here. If I flip this up, there is no USB port. It is a blank port. So this does not come with USB-C charging. And of course, USB-C charging comes in handy with these radios. Um, you know, you can charge them from power banks and if you don't have a source of power, like a drop-in charger or something like that. I'm not quite sure why they decided to remove this uh, because as far as I understand that they are pretty much both the same. Now, I've heard that this has an upgraded speaker. I might be wrong on that. And what I might do at some point, uh, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do this, I might do a tear down video. We might tear down these radios and see what the actual physical differences are uh, inside them. So uh, this might have a better speaker. I know that the design is a little bit different here on the front compared to the K5 and the K6, so perhaps there is an upgraded speaker. The audio does sound really good in this, especially when you do the modification, the EG Zuma modification. On AM, it sounds really good. So it's the same battery sort of type, um, but the UV K, uh, sorry, the UV K5 Plus, the battery is a lot thicker. It is a whole heap thicker. Uh, they both have the belt clip on the back. So these, this is the difference. The battery does have an extra 600 milliamp hours in the UV K5 Plus. So that's another difference. Apart from that, I can't tell any other physical difference. Operationally, it's exactly the same, especially when you load the firmwares. The firmware modifications I've seen cover all of these radios. It doesn't matter which radio you use. You can, uh, the, the K5, the K6, this one, the UV 5R Plus, all of them will accept the firmware um, that come out or the modified firmware, but just check. Uh, I'm not responsible if you brick your radio because there might be some firmwares out there that only work with one or the other, but I believe that they're patched for all of them. I haven't seen otherwise. So I've tested the K5 and the K6 on my spectrum analyzer and they are relatively clean compared to other 
Chinese radio. So what we're going to do is put the UV5R Plus on the spectrum analyzer and see if this is also the same. I suspect that it will be because I think that it has the same innards in it. If you want to test your own radios, it's really easy to do so using one of these tiny SAs. I've got the tiny SA Ultra. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to pick up one of these. It's really, really cool because not only can you test your own radios, but you can see all of the spectrum around uh, your location and you can even listen in too by using the little headphone jack here. So yeah, pretty cool little device. So I've got the radio plugged in here. It is going to be transmitting on 146500 through this 20 dB attenuator, through another 20 dB attenuator here, and then we've got uh, so 40 dB of attenuation here so that we don't blow up the tiny SA. I've calibrated all of that out, and you can see there I've also drawn a line. Uh, that blue line is minus 16 dBm, which is where we need to be on this radio. So let's just key up now and transmit. And we'll just wait for that to settle in because the tiny SA takes a little while to sweep all of the sweeps. Number two, which is our second harmonic, around 290 megahertz or so, uh, at minus 49.2 dB below the carrier. So that's over what we need it to be. It's close to what it should be, it needs to be in about another 6 dB down. But there's no other harmonics further up the band, there's no third harmonic that I could see, no spurs there, no fourth. So it definitely is a lot cleaner than other radios, it's just that first harmonic. Here's a quick demonstration for everyone that keeps asking me, will it transmit on CB or will it transmit on the frequencies that it's not allowed. Now, I'm doing this as a test into a dummy load, it's into the spectrum analyzer, I'm not radiating anything out. For the purposes of this test, I just wanted to show you what the effects are of doing this. So on 29.600, which is a 10 meter FM frequency, so we're gonna do the same harmonic test and we're gonna key up just quickly. Look at all these spurs. Look how bad that is. That is transmitting on 20 odd megahertz and it's not even close. Look, the main carrier is on 118 megahertz. That's where the most amount of power is coming out of that. So you're putting out very, very small amount of power. Um, just have a look at, I think it's the first marker there on the left. You're putting out microwatts, absolutely microwatts. So it's not going to transmit well on 10 meters. 52 megahertz, I suspect we're gonna get the same thing. Yep, look at all the spurs, absolutely dirty as. On the EG Zoomer firmware, I did mention that it makes AM a lot better if you go into the menus here and you go down to menu item number, went the complete wrong way. Menu item number 56, AM fix, turn that on, and it will sound heaps better when you're listening to aircraft. That's uh, 711, uh, Minkie 1H, 1019er, uh, wind 030 degrees, 12 knots, all crosswind from the left, backtrack approved, cleared to land. Uh, 1019er, backtrack approved, runway 12, cleared to land at uh, Delman. Hope, uh, turn my flash and extra, expect instrument approach, runway 12. Paraglider operations in progress at Single Hill, 1.5 nautical miles south, not above 1,000 feet. No matter what radio you use, the K5, the K6, or the UV5R+, they are all capable of running this custom firmware, which is becoming very, very popular and is pretty cool with some awesome features. If you want to learn more about it, then there are some links here to follow on the screen.